Engineering economics, time value of money. So going from present to future to annuity to gradient, how are you guys going to rate that? For some of you, everything is easy. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to see that, right? But I would say, to be honest, if you, if you guys just, you know, go back in time a little bit, okay, just be a little bit honest, right? Uh, I'm sure that I'm not saying that it's not easy for some of you. I'm sure it is, right? But gradient, the cash flow diagram was kind of interesting. Annuity, the cash flow diagram was not that straightforward right? And then especially when you have to collect different cash flows, bring to present and then bring to future type of stuff, it does get a little bit tricky, right? And embedded in this, guys, is our interest rate. So whether we need to come up with the effective interest rate or whether we need to divide the annual interest rate by the number of compounding periods and use that interest rate and make that adjustment. So I don't think it's really all easy. I'm going to rate this as medium. Okay, and also based on the questions that I got from students, the confusion that they run into. Cost estimation. So co what was cost estimation? Although they have a line item, but can somebody quickly tell me what was that one formula for cost estimation? Quickly, top of your head, what did this include? Cost estimation was capital, capital cost. Remember? And what was that formula? Take the annuity and divide by I, and that gives you the present value. Ring a bell? Does that ring a bell? And we discussed this in the context of what? Endowment funds, right? Things that the rich people, you know, donate and then it continues through perpetuity, right? Time infinity. Risk identification. So we did this briefly with the risk diagrams. Analysis is the big topic, which sort of encompasses everything, right? Because in analysis, whether you're doing break-even analysis, whether you're doing cost-benefit analysis, uh, you have to sort of move back and forth, uh, fo forward with the um, present value, with the future value, bring everything to annuity or bring annuity to, you know, you have to do a lot of uh, gymnastics and interest rate and everything is embedded in this as well. So risk, uh, so cost estimation, how are we going to rate cost estimation, guys? Cost estimation was? Fairly, I would say it's easy. What was difficult about this formula, guys? I think it's fairly easy. You just have to identify that this is a problem that involves, you know, capitalization, right? So I would say this is easy. And risk identification, this was that um, uh, the decision tree. Remember the decision tree that we did? I think it's easy. Analysis, what do you guys think about analysis? Analysis is medium because it's encompassing. So when you look at this section, I mean, it sort of justifies that half of it is sort of medium and half of it is sort of easy. And it was one of the reasons why we ended up dedicating two sessions. Remember, we dedicated an entire Saturday and Sunday on NGCon. And that was the reason because we wanted to give it the respect that it deserved. There's a right, wide range of topics. And then embedded in this was the discussion around bonds and taxes and all of that stuff. Okay. IRR and all of that internal rate of return and things like that. So I would say if you find yourself spending a little bit extra time on engineering economics, it's worth it, right? Uh, on, we also discuss a lot of practical real life examples, right? Remember the mortgage discussion we had, I actually had uh, uh, students reach out to me and like, Vaseem, I gave my mortgage provider a call and then I uh, changed the frequency from monthly payments to weekly payments, you know? So I think that was interesting discussion. We talked about investments, stock market and things like that. But in the context of the exam, I would say that this is worthwhile section because it carries over. Okay, to P power, very few sections we can say that they're going to carry over to P power. It's one of those sections. Okay, um, it, it is again pre early section, right? So, right after math, probability, um, ethics, you uh, you come across section number four. So, keeping a positive frame of mind and being able to do a lot of these problems is going to help, right? Now, properties of electrical material, it looks like a little bit overwhelming, but we know that there's nothing to it, right? Uh, not much to it. Uh, semiconductor materials, I discuss it under electronics, right? So we have, um, we discussed, uh, so how would we overall rate semiconductor material, fundamental, energy band, PN theory, diffusion, and all that. I would say overall, it's an easy topic, right? Electrical properties, properties of electrical material, capacitance, conductivity, resistivity, all this stuff is pretty easy. And thermal properties, pretty easy. Overall, a very easy section, right? Uh, in between, there are some pitfalls. Uh, units of measurements can sometimes be issue. Students sometimes mess up uh, the constants, right? Uh, constants for magnetic permeability and um, permittivity, okay? Uh, similarly, you have Boltzmann constant in the PN theory, energy bands. Um, uh, over here, units of measurement, like if the temperature is given in degree centigrade and if the coefficient of thermal expansion is given in per Kelvin, so you cannot simply just use this, right? You have to do the conversion. So those type of small, small things that I've identified as we were going through, 
um, I, I think they're going to be helpful. Now, once you wrap up section number five, you basically uh, dealt with arguably some of the easiest topics on the entire exam. Okay, math, as you can see, so we have a lot of easies over here. We have medium easy, you know, easy, easy, you know, easy, medium, easy, right? And lots of easy over here. So the first five sections right up front, guys, psychologically, you know, you need to set yourself up for success without putting too much pressure on yourself, right? It's sort of a balancing act. If you do see some questions that are, you know, pushing you out of your comfort zone, you know, um, making it seem a little bit more difficult, that's perfectly fine, right? But the questions that you can solve, make sure you you do them at justice, right? You actually work through them properly, okay? <clears throat> because these are relatively easy points to score. It it sets the stage for what is to come next in your mind, not necessarily in absolute sense, because the exam is what the exam is. You cannot change that. But your attitude as to how you're approaching, how comfortable you are, what your heart rate is, how you're breathing, you know, whether you're getting nervous, whether the pen is falling through your hands, right? Whether you're sweating. So, that all of those factors, you need to keep them in check, okay? Because you cannot be too distracted. You need to be zoned in. So the first five sections can set that stage where you're like, oh, 20, 25% of the exam, I've already aced it, right? Or even if, you know, I've hit 80%, I'm above average. So I'm going in knowing that if there are some flags that are in the first five sections, I can come back to them, right? It's not an issue. I've done a decent job with this. And, you know, I'm into the second second quarter of the exam now. Make sense? Any comments? Any questions that you guys would like to ask before you move on to the next few sections? Mm -hmm.